Today on Switch to Linux, we're going to talk about Linux fragmentation. We're going to talk about why it is in some ways a good thing and why it is in some ways a bad thing. And we'll mention some of the articles I read and things I looked at recently that brought me to some of these conclusions and kind of want to talk a little bit about it. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you've already done so, leave us a like and a comment down below. Fragmentation in Linux. It is a interesting topic. So of course the fragmentation is what gives Linux its power, but at the same time also keeps it somewhat weak. First, what do we mean by fragmentation? The first thing that comes to mind is there are a lot of Linux distributions. When you talk about switching to Linux, some people say, well, there's so many there, I don't even know what to choose. Let me just make it easy. Start with Linux Mint. There's many other good distributions you can start with as well. Start there, learn a little bit of the basics, and then spend a little bit of time questioning. Do you like that type of ecosystem? Do you like that type of desktop environment? Are you looking for something more? Or some people I know, they, they switch to Linux, they don't want to use Windows, but they have no interest in being a Linux geek. Linux Mint works, they stick with it, and that's all it is to it. They use their computer for the basic things they use their computer for, and that's about it. Now, fragmentation means that there are a lot of different Linux distributions, and it can jumble the conversation to know which distribution to use as some people are like oh you got to use this distribution you got to use that distribution oh have you heard about this brand new distribution we saw this with that uh anduin os that came out uh not too too long ago and uh, a lot of people i mean it made the rounds i looked at it briefly and said eh, what is this i mean it's not much more than basic ubuntu with a few things and then a bunch of other people started looking at it going wow this is um, this is the next latest thing written by a microsoft engineer except it's a simple ubuntu skin that does not even live up to the promises the website makes and uh it is done by a single developer who is by the way a chinese national who lives in china uh yes microsoft employee but you know they do hire people all around the world and if you dig in a little bit and then you have to question is that a good thing or is that a bad thing i don't know it's the same region that microsoft stopped providing bug patches to because they seem to notice anytime they send a bug patch to that general region of china it would end up being exploited before it was patched very interesting there are articles on that you can look them up all right but the point is with it is is that uh, all sorts of people devoted themselves to looking at that one particular distribution and how many people have been thinking about switching to linux and they see their favorite youtube content creator upping this distribution going, wow this is so amazing and then they try installing that and it didn't live up to the promises it's done by a one-man team it doesn't really provide a whole lot back to the ecosystem it's just a basically slightly modified ubuntu with a different desktop environment and a few slight modifications and uh, when you get into it, that is not enough to justify an entire distribution for. Now, at the same time, I don't want to be like, well, we have all the distributions. There's no reason in making any more. And uh, that's it. We just stick with what we got. Because what happens then is some distributions die, some distributions consolidate, and then we are left with the same mess that we get looking at the difference between, you know, broadcast networks in America in the 1980s versus today. We had like 50 networks back then and we got like three today. And we don't want that to happen to Linux because too much power becomes consolidated into single groups. And that is certainly a problem. However, when you have so many distri different distributions, you have a single person working on it and it draws so much attention, everyone starts using that distribution over other ones. Now we start splitting up our abilities to create and push ideas and maintain code. And now we have a bunch of Linux distributions that are weaker. We have Linux distributions that fall by the wayside and things like that. 
So what led me to this discussion? Well, one article just came out uh, just uh, today as I'm recording this, I guess yesterday as I'm recording this, and that is that the Ubuntu Unity, which is the newest of the official Ubuntu community builds, is at risk of losing that status. And this is because there is a whopping two maintainers of this entire community spin. And in these two maintainers, one of them has... Tech to take on extra schooling responsibilities and the other one had some personal issues. It meant that the Ubuntu Unity community spin was being automatically pushed out and not really being tested or examined by any real people. And this raises a serious concern. Now, the Ubuntu Unity is effectively the same Ubuntu you would have gotten uh, years ago before they dropped the Unity desktop going back to GNOME. In fact, I kind of predicted this is going to happen. This is one of the topics that actually launched my channel. It's kind of special and dear to me because I started using Linux right near the end of it. And Ubuntu, like Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu at that time, they were working on uh, Unity. I think it was Unity 8 at that time and they were working on the subject that was called convergence of course this is right when windows came out with the you know the windows 8 and they were trying to have one operating system that could work on a phone on a tablet and on a computer and that's what unity was trying to do and i looked at what this stuff was doing i looked at that and i go they are never going to succeed at this, at least at the rate that they are going. And that was one of the first videos I did that launched my channel into a lot of uh, people looking out and, and going, oh, wow, that's interesting points. And of course, I had a whole lot of people in comment, oh, you're just an idiot. And wouldn't you know it, only like a month after I made that video, they're like, yeah, we're dropping Unity. We're going back to Gnome. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> All right. I was right. Woohoo. That was one of my first of many predictions, particularly about Ubuntu that actually came true. That's kind of funny. Uh, one of the, my other ones was a good one because it ended up um, showing up in an It's Foss uh, video um, article, and they ended up taking the article down because it came true. <laughs> Something about replacing uh, apt packages with snap. That's never going to happen. And then it happened. <laughs> All right. Um, but I like Unity. The Unity desktop is nice, and there's not a lot of uh, ability to use the Unity desktop in a lot of other different places. So having an Ubuntu Unity spin is kind of fun. Now, of course, all that being said, I'm not a massive fan of uh, the Unity enough that I would want to use it. In fact, the Unity desktop itself is what got me looking for something else, something a bit more jived with my workflow. Hence, I found Cinnamon and love Cinnamon. Uh, but Ubuntu Unity was born from community nostalgia for the Unity interface, quickly gained traction among users who missed the Mac OS-like desktop with its global menu bar and dock. Of course, this is the iconic photo, of course, of... Uh, of Ubuntu Unity. You know, this is, uh, you see old documentaries or something of, of computers and they're not using Windows and they're not using Mac. Whoa, this is the interface you had. And it was very nice. Uh, the project has weathered challenges before the current situation sounds more concerning, seeing that development has basically stopped due to maintainer unavailability. Yesterday, Ubuntu Unity team member Mayek Adamitz had put out a call for help on the Ubuntu's discourse forum, explaining how both he and Rudra have been largely absent from the daily happenings of the project. Bugs aren't getting fixed, fixed testing and happening. ISOs are being auto-generated with no one actually checking them. Ubuntu Unity did not release a stable 25.10 version because of critical bugs. All right, so uh, the uh, the problem is the other um, one of the other uh, people who can help uh, does not have the technical know how to fix these particular issues, uh, and uh, the fact is uh, sometimes sometimes they step away. In this case, it's one person of the project. There were only two maintainers here. One person stepped away for uh, family personal reasons, and the other one stepped away because of greater responsibilities. Wouldn't you know it? I know, guys. It's hard for you to recognize this, especially if you're young. When you're in high school, you think you couldn't be any 
busier until you're in college. You're in college. You don't think you could be any busier until you're in grad school. You're in grad school. You don't think you could be any busier until you get a professional life. And a lot of these distributions are started by people still in college and they get out and get a real job and they realize, wow, I am just too tired to maintain a Linux distribution. You know, even the the person that uh, ran uh, NeoFetch, super popular program for a long time, he just said, yep, I'll just take it up farming. <laughs> All right, go figure, right? Um, that's the thing. So, of course, um, uh, they are calling for help, and it would be very nice if the Ubuntu Unity project sticks around. Uh, but the point is, is that fragmentation says now this is two developers that could have contributed in other places contributed to this one small distribution which right now is going by the wayside and potentially losing some of these issues and that's one of the things to keep in mind now the second thing I looked at is there was a new Ubuntu um, uh, based distribution that popped out with its own brand new desktop environment I thought oh, that might seem interesting so I got, went ahead and downloaded a cock copy of Nebi OS to install it and it was just played with issues and problems. It is trying to accomplish something really interesting, although it does have a lot of weirdness and bugs. It's probably more novel than it is particularly useful. And again, though, this is a distribution put together by a single person. And of course, it is really designed to put together the um, the distribution itself has the cloud infrastructure tied to Nebi Soft. And uh, I looked at the Nebi Soft website, and of course, it wants to start out with all this kind of corporate type stuff. It respects your privacy by asking you to give a lot of information. Now, at least uh, what I can say about this that is completely different than most other sites like this is that the easier to see and click on button is the one that does not track you. So, okay, I will agree with that. The problem is, as I was looking around at the site and I was looking at different things, I found a lot of issues inside of the website itself. And uh, I don't know if they're maybe they're resolved or from the wrong spot. Like here's Nebby Cloud is the one thing that they are trying to promote in the distribution. I click on that and I get a forbidden page. Nebby chat uh, this one I get this type of page and uh, here's the support yeah I guess <laughs> getting help on this distribution is forbidden I guess and this isn't just to be overly critical of the the Nebi soft or the Nebi OS distribution my point is this is a single developer who is obviously talented enough to put something together like this maybe it might be better to say hey let me contribute to another project that might be able to uh, to work and the reality is here is that when you are spreading the resources this thin and you especially get these very small single developer maintained things that are focused on something small like a niche apparently like JavaScript, I guess, based desktop. I have no idea what that desktop's like. Um, it's it's just it's weird. It's very buggy. I had to try and install it multiple times. The installer kept crashing, and every single time I loaded up, I seemed to get a different mouse pointer for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, but the question is: is are these people doing these single developments? Are they actually contributing upstream, or are they just doing slight modifications and that's about it? And releasing a single developer distribution for the world and who out there is actually using these distributions. Now, I'm not saying it's really bad and every distribution has to start somewhere, but sometimes we have too many distributions out there and there's not enough fundamental differences between one and another to necessitate another slot in the which Linux do I use question. And so fragmentation itself is good because it purifies projects from being overtaken by corporate. It purifies projects from being overtaken by ideology like we are seeing in some uh, projects and in some distros. However, too much fragmentation produces a problem. We have projects with a lot of bugs, projects that risk disappearing, projects that risk leaving users in a lurch, and projects that that you know they're not bringing enough to the table that those talented developers might be better off working on some other project where if they need to step away for personal reasons they're not completely sinking an entire system they're just you know maybe making it a little bit more inconvenient on one small part of a project like the Nebi OS you know rather than focusing on building a whole distribution why not just focus on a brand new desktop and get that desktop as polished now maybe that's what Nebi OS is trying to accomplish I can't tell 
tell because I was never able to get a stable enough system to test it out for sure. But the point being here is that when we have way too much fragmentation, we have weakness of projects. When we have too few fragmentation, we have corporate takeover and ideology seeping into projects. So striking that firm balance between them, how many is enough? I'm not going to totally try and answer that question. What I am going to say, though, is that maybe we need to stop focusing on single distributions unless you're really bringing something fascinating to the table, in which case try and pitch it to another distribution first. If not in a mainline distribution, maybe instead you might put that inside of uh, inside of a community spin, something like that. Of course, that is kind of what Ubuntu Unity was trying to do. But anyway, the point being, um, focus on where you can help strengthen the Linux community, not weaken it by adding yet another distribution to cloud up the world. Let me know your thoughts about all that in the comments down below.